Good morning. My name is Carol Freitas. I'm the Westport Veteran Service Officer. I would like to thank all of you for attending today's Veterans Day ceremony. Before we begin, I would like to take a moment to acknowledge our elected officials, including State Senator Michael Rodericks, who unfortunately could not be with us this morning, State Representative Paul Schmidt, who is here, right there, uh, our, our Board of Selectmen Chair Richard Brewer, Stephen Ouellette, Manuel Soares, Ann Boxler, and Shauna Schufelt, as well as all of, the, all of the other elected officials in Westport. I'd also like to thank the leadership of the Westport Veterans Organizations, Tony Vieira, Commander, and Tom Flynn, Adjutant, both of the American Legion, James Morris Post 145, Tom Grant, Commander, and Brian Bullio, Quartermaster, of the Veterans of Foreign Wars, WAR, WA and R, Willette Post 8502, and Justin Latini, President of Vietnam Veterans of America, Chapter 207, for their assistance in planning today's ceremony, as well as the membership of these three organizations, all of which will have a part in today's ceremony. At this time, I would like to ask everyone who is a veteran to please raise their hand. Can we have a round of applause for our veterans? These are the people that we are here today to celebrate and honor. Thank you for your service and for being part of the brotherhood and sisterhood of the United States Armed Forces. I ask now if you can please stand, if you are able, for the invocation, followed by the playing of the Pledge of Allegiance, um, I apologize, the playing of the National Anthem and the Pledge of Allegiance. Our invocation is by Reverend Andy Stinson, Reverend Stinson joined the Army Reserve at 17 years old, and after graduating from college, he was commissioned a second lieutenant in 1991. He was ordained into the Catholic ministry in 1999 and was commissioned into the U.S. Army chaplaincy in 2002. Reverend Stinson had multiple activations, including to Baghdad, Iraq in 2010, and retired from the Army Reserve in 2013. Now the 19th settled pastor of the First Congregational Church of Fall River, Reverend Stinson and his wife Kristen are proud residents of Westport. Please welcome Reverend Stinson. I invite you to pray with me. Creator of all that is, giver of life and peace itself. We turn to you on this high day, in this hallowed place, asking that you lend your presence to our assembly this morning. Let we who gather, and we throughout Westport, be granted the spirit and the actions to honor well those who have taken up the warrior's call and service to our nation. Let this day honor every sacrifice, tend every wound, fully welcome home, every soldier, sailor, airman, marine, and coast guardsman. Knowing our humble thanksgivings and our meager efforts are incomplete to the task, we call upon you, the author of true peace and true thanksgiving, to be present here and now and upon the, our lives and there, our veterans living, that with your blessing and through our ceremonies and our actions, they may truly know the sacred love of our town and this nation and that all, that all they have endured is not in vain, but may aid Westport and our world to become the best we have yet to be through the efforts of their sacrifice. In your holy name we pray, amen. Please stand for the national anthem.
please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance, led by Ed O'Hara. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Reverend Stinson, the school band, and Ed O'Hara. Please welcome Army veteran Tony Vieira for brief remarks on behalf of the Westport American Legion, James Morris Post 145. Thank you, please be seated. Not because I'm gonna speak for very long, but if you have a seat, you better take advantage of it because some of those folks don't have seats. Thanks for coming today, folks. On behalf of the American Legion, it's our pleasure to host the activities here this morning. I have the responsibility of dealing with a little over 100 veterans in the American Legion. There are over 1,000 in Westport. I see the VFW out here, Vietnam Veterans of America, and a lot of folks that don't participate necessarily in any one of those organizations, but participate in our community. They're veterans, they're families. Talked to a number of them this morning, and we appreciate the commitment that our community makes to the armed forces to provide opportunities for us and our freedoms that we enjoy. I'd just like to introduce the other folks that serve as officers within the American Legion. Our state representative, Paul Smith, who's our senior vice commander. George Stalis. George is uh, just getting ready to go off to a soccer game representing the town of Westport. He handles the Goldies for the town of Westport in soccer. They're playing uh, Sutton, I think, this afternoon. Uh, and George's goalie hasn't been scored upon in a tournament yet. Good work. I could go on and on, but I want to introduce a few more real quickly. Murray May in first row, just back from Germany. It's a member of our board. Will, I see you in the second row there. Will uh, Marassi. And you just saw our, uh, Ed, Ed O'Hara did the Pledge of Allegiance for us. The gentleman who's not here, and I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, is Tom Flynn. Tom is a friend of our speaker, and he may speak a little bit about him later on in his remarks. But Tom would be with us today, except that he's uh, reserved the room at St. Luke's Hospital. He's having a little work done, and we hope to see him next week. He was operated on a couple of weeks ago. So in your prayers this evening, please remember Tom. That kind of makes up the executive board for the American Legion, just one part of the organizational structure for the veterans within our community. I want to thank you, family community and veterans for your service to others and to our community and to the families of veterans who are no longer with us. God be with you. Thank you. Thank you, Tony. To read the governor's proclamation, please welcome Tom Grant, commander of the Westport Veterans of Foreign Wars, post 8502. Whereas since the Commonwealth's earliest days, thousands of men and women have served our country in defense of freedom and liberty. And whereas on November 11, 1918, after four years of conflict, the armistice was signed in the forest of Compagni by the Allied nations in Germany and in World War I, the war to end all wars. And whereas since that day, every November, people from around the nation have gathered to honor our veterans. And whereas in November 2023, the world will commemorate the 105th anniversary of the armistice that ended the fighting in World War I at 11 a.m. November 11th, 1918, the 11th hour, the 11th day of the 11th month. Whereas there are approximately 300,000 veterans living in Massachusetts, and whereas they are reminded of the great sacrifices and contributions to our veterans have made to our country, and whereas we honor and salute those who served our country throughout the generations with honor, patriotism, and courage. Whereas it is appropriate that all Massachusetts citizens remember the bravery of those who served their country, so their dedication and sacrifices a reminder of the cost of our freedom. And now, Therefore, I, Maria T. Healy, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 11, 2023 to be Veterans Day. 
and urge all citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly in its, fittingly in its observance. Given the Executive Chamber in Boston this 11th day of November in the year 2023 and the independence of the United States of America, 247th. Thank you, Tom. To perform the symbolic laying of a wreath, please welcome two Westport veterans, Claude Ledoux, a Marine Corps veteran who served during the Korean War from 1952 to 1955, and Lawrence Holsworth, an Army veteran who served in the 82nd Airborne Division from 1982 to 1986. Please come forward. Thank you, Claude and Lawrence. At this time, I would like to read a poem entitled, I Am a Veteran by Andrea Christensen Brett. Before I do, however, I'd like to share the interesting backstory of how this poem came to be. So Andrea performs with her family in Branson, Missouri, and she wanted to create something original that would give honor to the veterans who attended their shows. Each day, Andrea would visit with the veterans in attendance and heard their stories and felt the love they have for their country and the pride they have in their service. She was moved and inspired by their sacrifice. She was always surprised by how such ordinary looking people had such amazing and often heroic stories to tell. And their stories began to take the shape of a poem. Each line of this poem represents a person Andrea personally met or was told about. The poem, the words in the poem are symbolic of the experiences of all veterans who have their own story to tell. I am a veteran. You may not know me the first time we meet. I'm just another person you see on the street. But I am the reason you walk and breathe free. I am the reason for your liberty. I am a veteran. I work in the local factory all day. I own the restaurant just down the way. I sell you insurance. I start your IV. I've got the best looking grandkids you'll ever see. I'm your grocer, your banker, your child school teacher. I'm your plumber, your barber, your family's preacher. But there's a part of me you don't know very well. Just listen a moment, I have a story to tell. I am a veteran. I joined the service while still in my teens. I traded my prom dress for camouflage greens. I'm the first in my family to do something like this. I followed my father like he followed his. Defying my fears and hiding my doubt, I married my sweetheart before I shipped out. I missed Christmas, then Easter, the birth of my son, but I knew I was doing what had to be done. I served on the battlefront. I served on the base. I bound up the wounded and begged for God's grace. I gave orders to fire. I followed commands. I marched into conflict in far distant lands. In the jungle, in the desert, on mountains and shores, in bunkers and tents, on dank earthen floors. While I fought on the ground, in the air, on the sea, my family and friends were home praying for me. For the land of the free and the home of the brave, 
I faced my demons in foxholes and caves. Then one dreaded day, without drummer or fife, I lost an arm, my buddy lost his life. I came home and moved on, but forever was changed. The perils of war in my memory remained. I don't really say much, I don't feel like I can, but I left home a child and came home a man. There are thousands like me, thousands more who are gone, but their legacy lives on as time marches on. White crosses in rows and names carved in queue remind us of what these brave souls had to do. I'm part of a fellowship, a strong, mighty band of each man and each woman who has served this great land. And when, O oh glory waves, I stand proud, I stand tall, I helped keep her flying over you, over all. I am a veteran. Thank you. I just thought that was a beautiful poem that encapsulates the story of so many veterans, and I had to share it this morning. So I'd like to welcome our next speaker, Richard Brewer, to provide brief remarks on behalf of the Westport Select Board. Thank you. On behalf of the Board of Selectmen, Thank you all for being here today. I'd like to thank Carol for the nice introduction in the poem. And I would like to especially thank her for what she does for our veterans here in the town of Westport. Thank you. I'm very blessed to have had numerous opportunities to be here for both Veterans Day and Memorial Day to make remarks on behalf of the Board of Selectmen. And I always mention that we're here to honor all veterans today for, for what they do for their country, what they have done for their country every day. It's really to show our support. And today I'm reminded that our men and women of, this, of the armed forces are, are under threat and under siege. As I speak, I know we have, I believe it's two carrier fleets in the Mediterranean ready to go into action and do what they need to do to, to preserve peace. But one thing I've been reading lately, and maybe a number of you have, is that something that we need to talk about and show support for our veterans, because the military is having a very difficult time recruiting people. Uh, this has been written about, in fact, it's in today's Providence Journal on the front page. There's, there's an article that explains some of the reasons. I have an article here. This is from the Heritage Foundation. It points out that at a recent House Armed Services Committee hearing, Leaders from the Army, Navy, and Air Force reported that they expected to miss their annual recruiting goals this year by thousands, by thousands. And there are 30 million people between the age of 18 and 24, and the military needs less than 1% of these people, about 160,000 a year, to meet their needs in terms of enlistment. There's a lot of reasons for this. I won't go into that. I would be here all day. But the thing that caught me in this article, caught my eye, was what it said at the very end. It said that in order to deal with this problem, we need to set an example. We need to encourage young people to join the military. It's a wonderful, a wonderful career. And it says government and military leaders, parents, teachers, and community leaders will have, all have to engage with our youth to help them understand the importance of military service and to encourage them to become members of the military, as many of you here have done today. So that adds additional importance to this year's commemoration. And I have a little vision that someday, I'll, down the road when I'm no longer a selectman, I'll be at Lee's Market and somebody will tap me on the shoulder and say, Mr. Brewer, I'm a member of the Armed Forces and I'm here in part because of the remarks you made eight or ten years ago at at Veterans Day at the cemetery or at Memorial Day. This would be, this would make my day. This would make me feel wonderful. And I thank you for supporting this. You are here today to support our, our veterans 
and I applaud you and respect you for that. Thank you. Thank you, Dick. We are honored to have as our keynote speaker, Judge Joseph Macy. A 1961 Durfee High School graduate, he earned a bachelor's degree from Brown University in 1965 and his Juris Doctorate from Boston University Law School in 1968. Judge Macy was an Army Infantry Officer who served from 1968 to 1971. After completing Officer Candidate School, he attended jump school at Fort Benning, Georgia and jungle warfare training at Camp Zama in Panama. Judge Macy was an infantry advisor as part of the Military Assistance Command for Corps in Vietnam. He was awarded a Combat Infantryman's Badge, which I noticed he's wearing on his lapel, his Parachutist Badge, also known as Jump Wings, the National Defense Service Medal, and the Vietnam Service Medal. And he is a, <clears throat> and he is a charter member of the Vietnam Memorial Wall Committee in Fall River. Following his military service, Judge Macy maintained a private law practice for nearly three decades and was appointed as a justice on the Massachusetts Trial Court where he served from 1998 to 2015, followed by an appointment as the Corporation Counsel for the City of Fall River from 2015 to 2020. Judge Macy is married, his lovely wife is here with us, with two adult children. Please welcome Judge Macy. Thank you, Carol. After that poem and that introduction, if I had any brains, I'd sit down. But uh, the infantry isn't known for being intelligent. Uh, I want to thank you, welcome our honored guests, our elected officials, and especially my fellow veterans. I want to thank you for inviting me to speak today. I'm always honored to be asked to speak to, for, and about veterans. And I consider it a privilege to be allowed to do so now. On the 11th hour of the 11th day of the 11th month of 1918, the guns of Europe ceased to fire, and a quiet descended over the battlefields. That day, subsequently known as Armistice Day, was believed to end all wars. It did not. Thereafter, followed World War II, the Korean conflict, and in 1954, President Eisenhower signed a bill into law declaring November 11th as Veterans Day. Today is Veterans Day, a day on which we honor all our veterans, past and present, living and deceased, those who served in war and in peace, in combat and in garrison, enlisted, officers, men and women. There's a phrase which perfectly encapsulates those we honor today. All gave some, some gave all. In 1961, a young naval veteran from Massachusetts was inaugurated as president of the United States. On that day, he said, ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. Americans' veterans have answered that call prior to 1961, and they certainly have answered it afterward. On that day, President Kennedy laid down a marker for our country and our world. He said, let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we will pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and success of liberty. Now, I believe he meant that as a pledge, but it was also a prophecy. Our veterans have picked up that marker over and over and over. In Vietnam, in Afghanistan, in Iraq, twice, in countless encounters over the years, throughout the world, and continuing up to today. Let me tell you something about veterans you may have already noticed. They serve, they don't brag. 
they show up. They don't show off. The position of soldier, sailor, airman, marine, coast guardsman commands neither high salary nor great prestige. Yet their positions in which men and women of courage and honor had served since the inception of our nature, nation. Today, we honor them, all of them. In 2005, I was fortunate enough to be the master of ceremonies at the dedication of the Marine Memorial Monument in Fall River, the Iwo Jima statue. Many people were there that day, including many World War II and Korean War veterans. As I walked through the grounds and I looked out from the podium, I was struck by the makeup of the crowd. I knew many of them. I'd see them downtown, at sporting events, at City Hall. Regular people, I thought. But on that day, many of them wore their colors and their decorations. It was amazing. Men and women of all services, all wearing their battle ribbons and service ribbons, service medals, bronze stars, silver stars, purple hearts, lots of purple hearts. Ordinary people who did extraordinary things, who returned from the service to resume their lives and never said a word. Heroes, and we never knew. In 2021, we dedicated the Vietnam Memorial War in Fall River. Crowd was slightly smaller, somewhat younger. A lot of the World War II Korean War veterans were gone. But the mix was the same. Regular people with regular jobs and families were wearing the same colors and decorations with the same service to their country, our country. Veterans with bronze stars, silver stars, purple hearts, lots of purple hearts. And of course, 58,223 veterans no longer with us. Today, when Carol asked the veterans here assembled to raise their hands, I was sure it would be the same mix of medals and scars, dedication and duty. And sure enough, as I look out, I see people with their colors. I recognize most of them. They didn't brag. They didn't ask for anything. And they, like all veterans, are silent heroes who served and returned and asking nothing of us. Today, we honor everyone. Some things never change. On that cold January 62 years ago, President Kennedy said, since this country was founded, each generation of Americans has been summoned to give testimony of national loyalty. Our veterans have answered and continue to answer that summons. Today is both a celebration and a commemoration. It's a day to appropriately honor all of our veterans, wherever they are, Whatever they did, all gave some. Some gave all. Here we go. Today, to all our veterans, as individuals, we say, we appreciate your service. As a nation, we say, God bless our veterans. And as veterans, we say, in return, God bless America. Thank you, Judge Macy. I ask you now to please direct your attention to Sam Manley, which, where is he? He's our bagpiper. He is going to play a medley of military branch songs for us on his bagpipes. When you hear your branch's song, please stand or raise your hand if you so choose. He will be playing in the order of Space Force, Coast Guard, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, and Army. Sam?
Thank you, Sam, for that beautiful medley. For those of you who do not know, Sam is a Navy veteran himself. So our ceremony is about to conclude. I would like to thank each and every one of you again for your presence here today to honor the more than 1,000 current Westport residents who are veterans and all those who came before them who donned the uniform of whichever branch or in some case branches that they joined in service to this country, that, this great country we call home. I would also like to thank all of the participants for their part in today's ceremony. Please enjoy the rest of your day. To the veterans in attendance, I hope you take the opportunity to visit one of the many restaurants offering free meals as a token of gratitude for your service. And now I ask you to once again rise for the benediction by Reverend Andy Stinson, a rifle salute by the Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 207 Honor Guard, and the playing of taps by students Julia Pacheco and Trent Souza. Thank you. I invite you to uncover. Lord of all goodness, as we conclude our ceremonies this morning, let not our humility and appreciation and love for the sacrifices of our warriors be ended. Let your continued blessing, your peace that surpasses all understanding, be upon them and upon us as we depart this place. Instill in us strength and courage to renew our call not only to honor those who have borne the battle with wreaths and with words, but to make our town and our world worthy of receiving the sacrifice that have been laid down for it. Steal in us the heavenly resolve that love of town and country embodies in the love of duty, honor, and country that we have borne witness to today in the servicemen and women we honor. This Veterans Day, let us depart remembering always whatever light we may shine, whatever righteousness we may possess, whatever good we may do, and whatever life that we may have, all comes from you. And so may your light and our righteousness and your goodness and your blessing rest on our veterans, upon all of Westport, upon our state, and upon our nation. For this we pray in the name of all that is holy. Amen. Thank you. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you all for attending.